Behind me here marks the last gaming PC that I can put together before I completely run out of used parts. And this is going to be a kind of a precursor for tomorrow's used PC parts hunt of the month, where I'm pretty sure that I'm not going to be getting as lucky as I did in the previous months. But also today, I want to go over some of the things you can do if you're on a strict budget, or of course, if you still want to get a gaming PC. And last night, before I went to sleep, I was thinking about this a little bit more in depth. And when I hit rock bottom, which happened in 2007, that's when I had to borrow money off my ex-girlfriend. Uh, those times, in 2007 at least, before 2008, money was still good. People still had jobs. Uh, it was a healthy economy in 2007. So when I hit rock bottom, I guess I could say I hit rock bottom in a fortunate time. I could only imagine if you're out there at the moment, if you're hitting rock bottom now, and it's like literally one of the most unfortunate times in history. So what I'm gonna be doing here today is, uh, of course, showing you some tips and tricks if you're on a strict budget, and maybe if you've got family members and you wanna chip in, and build something that'll get you through isolation. But also, I'm gonna be having a giveaway in two days time as well. So stay tuned for that video where we're gonna be giving away some stuff and showing how you can get in a chance because who knows how long this thing's gonna last. And also right now for buying PC parts, I will say if you have a plan to buy PC parts in the next few months, you're better off doing it sooner than later. I've spoken to retailers, the supply chains are getting disrupted. If you're in Australia, the Aussie dollar that is tanked against the USD. And also another thing is locally here on the Gold Coast, it's uh, I guess people are really starting to panic buy PCs because my competitors have sold out of PCs days ago. And this is an unprecedented time where this is the first time I've ever had it. Competitors are sending business my way. And that usually never happens. Then what we've got right here is the HP Meta. If you guys saw the video, we basically managed to reuse this power supply here, which most of the time comes in with a gold or platinum rating. And now since we've got three SATA ports from this, we can actually make magic work and then we can plug two into our hard drive and SSD and then another one where we can use a six pin adapter to get something like a 1650 Super working, which I will say one thing about the 1650 Super it actually surprised me with its performance. It's a really fast card and it beats out that of a 1066 gigabyte most of the time. So it's gonna go perfect with today's build. We've got a 4770 and also 16 gigabytes of RAM. So let's quickly whip this thing up, see if it'll actually run a benchmark without crashing out because that's one thing I wanna test and see if this power supply is up to that because I've never done it with a 1650 Super before I believe. I think I might've done it with a 1650 which was fine, but not the Super. But another thing too is if you do do this, you have to make sure your power supply can be mounted up the top of the case. If you're mounting it down the bottom, it won't work because the cables just simply aren't long enough. Here we're using the Nimitz N7. I believe in Australia, you can pick these things up for 50 Aussie dollars. At least that's what I got mine uh, for before the local retailer sold out of cases. That's right, they got no more cases left. So that's how bad supply is getting. I was like, I guess I was happy that I got these before they ran out. And then we've got an exhaust fan here, which what we do is since we've got a fan header here, we just have to uh, chop the little bit here because it still will work with a three pin, but we just have to chop out this little bit here and then it will go on fine. So putting this PC together is like a normal PC up to a point. Uh, if we can see here, we're mounting the power supply, which doesn't fit a normal ATX power supply size. So we have to improvise a little bit here where we can screw down one corner first off and then actually unscrew the fan and use that to support the mount in the top corner there. After that, we get two PCIe brackets. We shorten them up and basically we mount one on the outside, one on the inside. This gives enough stability for the power supply to then not wiggle around and be in there firmly. The next thing we're doing here is soldering the five volt and the negative to the RGB on the case. And this works out perfectly because we've got no cables left over and since this was originally intended for the DVD drive, we can actually reuse that and then uh, solder it onto the RGB wires where they were originally Molex. And since we don't have any Molex connectors, we can just save a couple of bucks here instead of using any extenders and then probably use an adapter on an extender, which just makes things a little bit weird. We can just uh, simply solder these wires together and then safety tape them off and we're good to go. That's about all that differs from a regular build and we don't have any IO shield 
The CPU cooler is also a OEM proprietary solution from HP, though we can get around this by using four six over 32 nuts. Though the good thing is, is that since we've got no cables left over, there's quite literally a void of a thing known as cable management. So we now finished off this build here where the case is coming in at a very good price. It's still got tempered glass. And as we said before, it's 50 Aussie dollars, which is about 30 USD. And it's still got a bit of RGB LED bling there, which you may have noticed that we had to uh, splice up the wires because our power supply ran out of spare wires. And the good thing was is that the end uh, DVD connector is a five volt and this RGB here needs a five volt. So it was a perfect match made in heaven for that soldering job. And then we had the spare SATA connector left over, which we're using for the GTX 1650 Super. Now with this whole setup here, we've got a 4770, 16 gigabytes of RAM and a uh, decent graphics card, SSD hard drive. Now, one thing is if you wanna go down this route where you wanna use the HP 600 series and still keep your original power supply, save some money like we've done here, then don't couple it with anything higher than a 1650 Super or an RX 470. And you'll notice I said 470 and not 570 because I've actually tried this in the past with a 570 and the sad thing was is that it still works, nothing cut out or anything, but the power supply goes into extremely high RPM mode. And so it will sound like really bad. I, I mean, I'm one to not really care so much about noise, but this power supply really just starts losing it once you start going past those two graphics cards. These two here, I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna do a stress test right now with the 1650 Super. I'm actually gonna load up F1 2019 and just keep that on loop for an hour and we'll come back and it will be absolutely fine. So I've perfected my HP 600 series game. Where it's to the point now where you can get some serious good value for money, even in times like these. Though the one uh, negative, as we can see here, is that when we have to boot up our PC, we have to press F1. That's because we couldn't connect our USB 3 uh, front out connector because unfortunately the graphics card is blocking it out. You can buy some right angle adapters, but I have heard some bad stories and that the cheap ones don't actually work properly at all. So your mileage may vary there, but for what it's worth, when I was younger, I used to have to press the F1 key every time I booted my system anyway, so it's not that much of a detriment. Though after we quickly run the stress test, I'll come back for you guys and list some GPUs you may wish to consider still, or some, I guess, oddball OEM systems and parts that I guess a lot of people aren't gonna be buying in the mainstream. They require a little bit of tinkering and work, but will still provide really good value for money in these weird times. And we've just now exhausted all our battery and this machine is running fine. The, um, basically you can hear now the power supply is running absolutely fine too. So this whole setup is geared towards 1080p smooth gaming on a budget. So F1 2019 actually gets really good FPS with this configuration too. So let's move over now and look at what parts we can get if you're on a budget, but also if you want to build a new PC, you just want something good at the moment. So basically that is the last PC I can put together. After that, I'm out of stock. And this is the craziest season I've seen yet. It's even crazier than Christmas. And all the local people I've spoken to are saying the same thing as well. So it seems like the rush has just come this week where I live locally, where first thing we saw was toilet paper. And uh, that was a craze that sort of come and and is going at least now where I live, but now it seems like gaming PCs are being targeted. So my advice would be if you are comfortable and you can afford to go out and get something that's within your budget, then I'd do it sooner than later because I've spoken to a couple of retailers and supply has been geared up towards like a six to eight week uh, period where they get the shipments in advance and they have that amount of stock. But once that all runs out, then it could be uh, prices just go through the roof. So what I showed you guys just before is some of my favorite things that I do here on the channel, like that HP uh, 600 SFF, they're going really cheap. Even in the US on eBay, you can pick these things up for dirt cheap. You grab a case where it has the power supply able to be mounted at the top, and then you can reuse that power supply and most sellers will chuck in a hard drive 
eight gig of RAM i5. And all you really need to do is uh, get yourself a SATA to six pin and the GTX 1650 Super because I was looking at the 1650 Super when it first released, I was like, yeah, okay. But it's actually starting to grow on me a lot. And if you're in the US, it's around, I think 160, which is a pretty decent price. And then in Australia, they're still priced okay, considering the Aussie dollar has crashed. So I like this card. It's weird how it's growing on me, but that's mainly because I'm able to extract a lot of value out of that and couple it with uh, budget OEM power supplies and they don't get noisy or nothing shuts off. But if you want some easier options where you really don't have to do anything besides just put a graphics card in, then the Dell uh, T1650 series is a good option. There's also the T3500 and of course the Optiplexes. They're very popular, but usually the Optiplexes I find because they're pretty well known, they do carry a bit of a premium. So I would honestly be looking for a 1650 where it matches a 1650 super perfectly. So <laughs> I guess the irony there is that you can get a double 1650 if you go that Dell route. But there's also the Z420 desktops from HP. These are pretty good. Same deal as the Dell series where they've got pretty good power supplies and all you have to do is add in a graphics card. Though one thing I did find very weird and bizarre with the HP Z420 was that uh, we put a graphics card in and it would work off the HDMI port but it wouldn't work off the DVI port. So display and HDMI were fine, but then the DVI port wouldn't work. It was one of the most bizarre things I've ever seen. And we tried a different graphics card and we also tried different cables and monitors and we put it down to it just being it wouldn't work off DVI where it booted okay, but once it got to Windows, it would just clonk out on DVI only. So if anyone has an answer as to why it's doing that with the HP Z420, I'd love to hear your uh, thoughts on that. So that's one to be careful of if you buy that rig. Also do be careful of some OEMs out there while we're talking about that, because you can get some of like the third gen Veritons, for example, and they don't work with GTX 1050 Ti's or RX 580's or anything of the newer graphics cards. They only work with legacy cards. Uh, so if you do come into this problem, you'll know straight away. And some of these Veritons, for example, the third gen, I'm gonna look at the M4, where the fourth gen works absolutely fine, but the third gen, has it so that you can't change any of the options in the BIOS and you can't get that graphics card to work uh, properly. So that's a weird one to look out for. I will put some links in the description below for you guys of some of the OEMs that are pretty good and I've tested before and they represent great value for money in these weird times. Though of course, lastly, if you wanna build a new PC, it still looks like parts are fine in the US, in Australia. I haven't researched other countries, but it seems to be okay for now where you can get, for instance, a 5700 XT or a Ryzen 5 3600 or an RTX 2060, and you should be okay, and you're not really paying any massive higher premiums than you would in, say, if we compare it to the mining boom craze that went through, where you just couldn't get yourself a graphics card. So new parts are looking okay for now, but do keep in mind, in quite a few countries, they are doing what is called the infamous helicopter drop where they're just giving everyone money. If that happens, then you may see demand, especially for new parts, just like I'm seeing locally here for gaming PCs, you may see that start to spike. So if the, uh, I guess, supply chains don't get alleviated soon, then this could become a problem, especially in a month or so time. Though, of course, the last thing to talk about is good old AliExpress, where if you live in a country where you can't get access to decent retail prices, then that seems to have ramped up production again, where shipping times are going down again or back to normal to the three, four week period. So you can get some good things like RX 400 or 500 series cards. They're always a good buy on AliExpress. And of course, the uh, two Xeons in particular, some of my favorites are the 2620 V2. This thing's going for 17 bucks. 3.2 gigahertz, six cores, 12 threads. I've taken a look at that CPU, I'll put the link up here. And you've also got the 2678, which we also recently took a look at. And of course, the infamous Ryzen 5 2600, which is pretty much a value king going forward into 2020. Though in terms of the Ryzen 5 1600 AF, that's pretty much coming in the same price at the moment as the 2600. And, and with all that out of the way, I hope you guys are staying safe and this uh, predicament hasn't affected you too much. At least with YouTube at the moment, things seem to be okay, but the AdSense money has dropped down a lot in the last few days, so that's already an instant hit for YouTubers. So that's one thing I'm feeling personally 
though do let us know your thoughts and opinions too in the comments section below if you've got some really cool metas that you can share with people on how to get a cheap gaming PC together in these rough times and I'll be sure to pin that if it's a really good one and with that aside we've got the question of the day which comes from RTF Co Fire Door and they ask uh, why is he looking like a salesman for washing machines and uh, I can only really say one thing Hello my friend, if you are looking for the best washing machine in history, then you have come to the right place. Tech Yes City for only $9.99. You can get yourself a washing machine that'll clean up all that WD-40 out of your underwear. And it'll make sure it's looking and smelling brand new for another round of WD-40 Tech Yes loving. Anyway guys, I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. If you enjoyed this one, then you know what to do. Hit that like button. And if you stayed this far and you're not yet subbed, then ring that bell, that option's down there to get the content as soon as it drops. And I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.